finally did it, guys. I bought the dream car. Although, between the unexpected expenses, not to mention the two months that it spent in the shop with a battery issue, it's ended up feeling like half a dream and half a nightmare, which has gotten me thinking, was there a better way? Yes, there was. The Taycan may have neck-breaking acceleration, sublime handling, and every single creature comfort known to man, but there's one thing that it really lacks. Fun. He's not wrong, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. On the track, it's a blast. But who has time to go to the track? And when I'm at road speeds, I get about half a second of wee! And then it's got about as much personality as my minivan. I'm not even that much of a car guy, especially when it comes to gas powered ones. I mean, what year is it? But something about this vehicle just calls to me, you know? Maybe it's just the stick. Man, if I ever miss that. Or maybe it's the no nonsense, lightweight, three cylinder engine design. But the first thing it made me think of was goofing around as a teenager in my parents' 94 Suzuki Swift. I mean, obviously it's gonna fall short of the 5,500 pounds of German engineering I drive today, but it was just plain fun. And that's what the GR Corolla is. At least that's what these guys tell me. They haven't let me drive it yet, but I'm about to. And I'm so excited to tell you about our sponsor. The Ridge. Upgrade your everyday carry with the Ridge Wallet. Its RFID blocking technology protects your cards from digital theft while its durable materials ensure it'll last for years to come. Click the link below and use code Linus to save 10% off your purchase and get free shipping. Important, do it. Man, it's like, it's very light. Suspension's definitely squishier than a car that costs four times as much or whatever. Squishier? Yeah. This is pretty stiff. Oh! Like, okay, that was bad. It actually like flashed yellow and got mad at me. But you're going off the red line while slipping the clutch. That's very not good. What is good though, this has a special constant pressure clutch. Ooh. So the uh, pressure plate and the clutch are done in such a way that you always have the same amount of pressure between the two. I know if I'm gonna want some power right now. So if I need to, whoops, okay, that was, we're going a little fast for second gear, but my point stands. Three, two, one. Go until the thingy blinks. Oh my God. I... There we go. Okay, that was probably close to 5.5. I find it's not exceptionally fast. No, but it doesn't have to be. Oh, and it sounds so good. It has character. And yeah, you know what? Compared to the car I normally drive, it's not that fast, but it's like, you can feel it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> An automatic car would be like fifth right now. Uh, gas pedal all the way down, do nothing. I know this road well and I don't want to. Ooh, man, that's good. <laughs> so one other quite fun thing. Yeah. Right there's now, more? There, there's many. Right now it is sending 60% of the power to the front and 40 to the back. Oh. You can change that with this knob right here. Ooh. Turn it to the right. Okay. I now it's it. 30 to the front, 70 to the back. Can I have more back? No. Oh. 30, 70 is. That's pretty good. good. Yeah. And if you press it in the center, it's 50-50 and you're in track mode. It, it's not that fast, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just fun. I actually take back what I said before about it feeling squishy at all. Like it's yep. just, you know? Ah. It just go. <laughs> but like, it's not scary. No. Like you just, it feels good. You can rip it around again, like you said, without going so fast. Like it feels exciting at, what were we doing there? 65? We're not going that fast. Oh, oh cool. Yeah, it just like goes. It just grabs it. I mean, look how far back the camera car is. <laughs> We've gotten ahead of ourselves though. On the GR Corolla, so much of it just makes sense. Like it has Pilot Sport four tires on it, just from the factory. You don't need to throw out the ones that they give you. It also has end key rims that are 18 inches. That is the perfect size for a car like this. And if we come around here, the cooling system that's in it is actually incredibly rudimentary. Just like radiator, thermistor, pump. That's it. And how they get around that is just by having a big old front mount. In here, we've got the three cylinder that everybody absolutely loves. And if you look, it's pushed 
all the way back there to try and get it as far behind the front axle as it can. What I really like in here though, is if you look at this intake, first of all, you can see that it goes through here into the intake from there. But if we look under this filter, you can see that there's a little flap right here controlled by the vacuum lines that opens under hard acceleration so you can get way more air into there. And dang, does it ever sound good. Around the side, we've got a nice factory wide body kit. And around back, we have three exhaust tips. Now, the two on the sides go through all of the muffler, but the one in the center goes through only a tiny bit. That means that there's a valve that can open, so you get not only more power when it's going mostly through the middle, but also more noise. I confirmed with Toyota that in the GR Corolla, you're getting zero pumped in audio, unlike the GR Yaris. So you're just only hearing that engine making all of those beautiful noises. Something that no EV can say. But that's not to say that we don't love electric vehicles here. We really do. It's just better suited for something like this, the GV70 electric. It's super luxurious. It's super quiet. And also, it can do this. Oh! Ho, ho. You get all of that electric just slamming you into the back of the seat, but in something where the weight doesn't matter as much because you're much more concerned about just it being a really nice spot to be. And coming back to the GR Corolla, that nice spot to be factor is an area where arguably the GR Corolla falls behind. We've got the stock sound system, and although the imaging is decent enough, at least in the driver's seat, the frequency response is, simply put, not good, and the EQ bands are poorly set with no way to fix them. We have tried the optional JBL system in the Prius Prime, and it is better, even all right, but it's still far from excellent, meaning Toyota's track record here is not that great. As for the infotainment, we get Toyota's connected services, which has a bunch of cool stuff that you will likely never use once you see the cost per month, meaning that the eight inch infotainment screen is purely a vessel for wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Not that that's a bad thing at all. I actually much prefer this approach where those that want to completely ignore everything that Toyota has done software wise have that option. Tesla, Chevy, and for that matter, anyone else who's trying to get around allowing me to use my phone and the services that I already pay for, stop it. Possibly the worst part of the infotainment system though is that it entirely lacks the ability to adjust critical vehicle functions with those instead buried in a difficult to navigate maze of acronyms. Also, you gotta factor in in all of this that the GR Corolla is far from cheap and for the price, you can get dual climate, ventilated seats, adaptive damper so you can choose how stiff the ride is, adjustable lumbar support, a sunroof, a backup camera that isn't blurry, and perhaps most egregiously, a flippin' armrest. Like, I realize having an armrest might be a bit of a problem for, you know, ripping on the e-brake, but man, it would be really nice to have for any trip longer than like 10 minutes. If you're compromising everyday drivability for track performance, then it better be freaking good on the track. And I can tell you, it most certainly is. We are on an oval, which is the most logical spot, of course, to test out a rally car. And holy frig, this thing is good. I was a little bit concerned because I heard that in long sweeping corners, it can starve of oil. I'm seeing no issues whatsoever. Plenty of oil pressure. We are all good there. And it does have a little bit of understeer, but it's really not all that bad. And the amount of trust that I have in this car is so good. Like I have never just trusted that I want to go to spot. I point, I go there. It is so intuitive. The throttle response is excellent. I was really concerned hearing that there's 25.3 PSI of boost going into a three cylinder, that it would take a long old time to come on, but it isn't only very little lag, but it's incredibly linear. So you don't have to worry about like an STI where you're like, hmm, nothing's happening, ah, it's spinning. Now you might expect with being able to send 70% of the power to the rear wheels, that you would be able to drift this thing with the power. But first of all, in order to do that, it would probably need what, like 50, 100 more horsepower. I'm gonna floor it here. Yeah, the front is pushing. And even if we had that extra power, I am still very suspicious that in 3070 mode, you would still not be able to do proper drifts because of how this all wheel drive system works. Let's have a little discussion about that. I am curious. 
50-50 mode in track. That, that actually feels so much better. Yeah, you really need the e-brake if you want to get it to rotate. Like, just... Uh. I ran out of skill. <laughs> Alright, we'll stop doing that. How this all-wheel drive system works is fascinating. If you put this thing up on a lift and spin the front tires at 1,000 RPM, the rear tires are going to be spinning at 1,007. That's because it's geared such that the shaft that goes to the back of this car is spinning 0.7% faster than the front wheels. It would obviously be a huge problem if your rear wheels always spun a tiny bit faster than the fronts, but this is overcome by having a clutch pack that always slips on the rear differential. And how tightly you clamp that using electromagnetism determines how much power is sent to the front and to the rear. This is why you can't drift with 30% of the torque sent to the front and 70 cent to the back. The second that those rear wheels break loose, you're not going to have the torque available to send more power to the front and you're just gonna grip up and go out. Whereas if you have it in 50-50 on track mode, you'll be able to do big smoky slides. In theory, I'm not good enough for that. It's everything I could have asked for it to be and I am sorely tempted to buy one. What does that process look like? Well, for starters, at 47,000 Canadian rubles for the configuration we tested, it's already quite a bit to ask for a Corolla. And the issue is that uh, you could end up paying quite a bit more than that. In the US, it's particularly brutal with dealerships telling us that they're gonna want, uh, well, let's say, an extra $15,000 dealer markup. Now in Canada, consumer protections are a bit stronger, so the dealer can't just increase the price. So instead, they have to do things the shady way. Our local dealer told us, yeah, we can get you one, but you're gonna have to pay in cash and included will be literally every single nonsense dealer added accessory, prepaid maintenance and optional insurance, which ha, surprise, surprise, totaled an extra $15,000 in random crap that I don't want. Even ignoring the fun Corolla that is in low supply, this issue is chronic with Toyota. Want a RAV4 Prime? Jam it up your rectum. I mean, how is it even possible that for a car company, like that's their whole business, it's so difficult to buy a car from them. You want a Sienna, RAV4 Prime, Corolla Hybrid. I mean, basically anything on this list here, you can expect to wait literal years between giving a dealer a deposit and actually taking delivery of your vehicle. Must be nice collecting interest on the thousand dollars that everyone on the wait list gave you, Toyota. Or does it go to the dealers? With all this in mind then, oh, the question's for me in the script. Do you still want to buy one? I still want to but I don't think I can justify it right now. What I can justify is telling you about our sponsor. Squarespace. If you're building a brand online in 2023, a website is a must have. And if you need a tool to help build that brand, look no further than Squarespace. It's the all-in-one platform that helps expand your brand online. You can make a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything and everything from products to content. We love Squarespace so much that we use it here at Linus Media Group. Their custom templates make it easy to stand out the beautiful site that fits your needs, and you can maximize your visibility thanks to a suite of integrated SEO features. Their analytics tools also help you visualize what's working and what needs a little love. So get started today and head to squarespace.com forward slash LTT to get 10% off your first purchase. If you guys enjoyed this video, we haven't done a ton of cars on LTT lately, so I'm gonna throw you over to Short Circuit where we've got a really great video on the Prius Prime. It's not really that comparable to this, but it's probably a more sensible car. Alex really liked it.